Welcome back to another one, ladies and gentlemen. Today's video is sponsored by Crappie Monster. Be sure to use promo code DAVIS, that is all capital letters, D-A-V-I-S. Save 20% off on crappiemonster.com. Get yourself uh, some of these plastics. This is the curly tail we're gonna be talking about today. The chartreuse, white, pink. Three colors you definitely need in your tackle box for crappie year round. Plus, be sure, if you're in the market for a net, silicone nets, your hooks don't get caught in them. They are fish friendly, I guess it'd be called. They're not the nylon, they don't cut into the fish at all. And Crappie, they got two versions of nets, I got both of them. Um, that's the scoper, it's a shorter version of it. I think it extends to about six foot, but it compacts to probably just under four feet. So uh, if you got a smaller boat, highly recommend that one. If you're a guide or you use a lot longer rods, like a 10, 12, 16 foot crappie rod, they make the 12 foot extendable version. So be sure to go to crappiemonster.com, use promo code Davis, save 20% off your entire order. Today I wanted to talk about how to use side imaging um, specifically for shallower water crappie. Now typically I don't really fish crappie shallow as we get into the summer months um, because they stack up so well in deep water. I'm actually gonna show you both, show the shallow water kind of brush that some of these crappie are gonna set up on. Um, and then the deeper water stuff, the 15 to 20 foot is kind of the deeper stuff. Shallower is less than 10 feet. The one thing I will say about shallow water crappie, and the reason I don't typically fish for them is because our natural lakes up north um, that get down to the 20, 30 foot max depth range, those crappie are gonna stack up on the outside weed edge. When I say outside weed edge, it's the furthest weed growth that you can find on the lake. So some lakes are super clear and you can find them, the weeds growing in 20 feet of water that's going to be where those crappie are set up on our natural lakes. You're probably not going to catch crappie, you know, less than seven, eight feet on our natural lakes as we get into the dog days of summer. Um, but on the river systems here, because we have a ton of current and the bait fish population is massive, um, as long as you got oxygen and food, the crappie can survive in the shallow waters, even though water temps are upper 70s, low 80s, uh, which is pretty warm. You know, low 80s, that's, that's pretty warm for us up north. Uh, for those of you down south, I'm sure water temps get into the 90s through most of the summertime, but I'm going to show you how to use side imaging. I'm going to show you what I'm looking for and why I'm looking for specific spots on side imaging. And then we're going to jump up front. i um, going to use the live scope, obviously, but I'm also going to turn the live scope off and show you how to just cast at a buoy marker um, so that if you don't have live scope, there is a way to catch these fish up shallow. So when it comes to using side imaging for shallow water crappie, first you need to know where you're actually going to start scanning on a map, a topographic map like we're looking here. Now what you can't see on this map is there's actually a power plant with a large current outflow and there's a, a big rock flat or like a gravel flat that drops off into the main current system here within a relatively close proximity. I'm looking for these flatter areas in shallower water that are real close to steep drop-offs. And the reason that's important is crappie will seek deep water for safety reasons. So if there's a huge storm front that comes through, not only will crappie sink in the water column, but they'll actually push off the deeper water because that's where the safer, warmer or cooler water is, uh, depending on the time of year. The other thing is because there's a lot of current moving through here, that attracts a lot of bait fish, especially in areas where there's a little bit of a backwater eddy system. And so those bait fish move in, and if there's bait fish and that current brings oxygen as well, if there's bait fish and oxygen, those crappie are gonna be there. So what you wanna do is set your side scan to 70, 80 feet left and right, and start scanning these areas that are near current flows and these steeper drop-offs into the main current channel or the main river channel. So as you can see here, I found a little piece of brush in super shallow water, threw a waypoint on it, and I'm gonna circle back over it, drop the live scope down. If you don't have live scope, go ahead, throw a buoy marker out to, uh, to mark it. The one thing about shallow water crappie fishing, if you're gonna throw a buoy marker out, you might have to use 2D or down imaging to actually drive over the top of it to get an actual drop with your buoy marker. Might scare the fish, so give them a little bit of time to school back up on that piece of brush. But after that, you should be able to start catching fish. That's a little piece of brush that I marked with side imaging there. There he is. Took a minute to get him to bite. 
there we go, some shallow water river crappie. Anything less than 10 feet, I'm gonna take as a win right now because typically it's not where I fish these crappie. But if you can find little pieces of timber like this, I think it's it's gotta be a stump or something, a little piece of brush. And there's a ton of bait fish on it too. That Those aren't all crappie. Over the past few days, we've had strong winds pushing into this bank. And on Friday, I was out here catching a ton of crappie, just kind of roaming around, but they were just feeding on schools of bait fish that got pushed into this little rocky bank here. And it looks like they're still here because the bait fish are still here. But there are a ton of fish down there. And I know a lot of you don't, don't like the live scope. That's fine. I don't. I could probably throw a buoy marker on it because it looks like looks like it is a stump and they're holding there but there's a ton of crappie past it just sitting on the bottom in you know 10 feet of water but the only way you find this stuff is with with side imaging not with live scope live scope helps you like precision cast to it but oh my goodness there's a big school of them back there but that side imaging that's I just did a screenshot or I think I screen recorded it for you guys that side imaging is what really helps it stand out there he is that's such a such a light bite. Come here, buddy. That's a good crappie, though. Ooh, that's a that's a healthy crappie. Bottom lipped it, which means he hit it on the fall. That is a healthy crappie, though. Should get this guy on a bump board just to see what he is. Oh yeah, he's 11 and a half -er. All right. Yeah, he's 11 and a half. Ooh. Easy, bud. Ow. He got me. He got me. 11 and a half on the river. Shallow water crappie fishing, gotta love it. Some of these crappie are roaming a little bit. And so probably the best thing you could do is actually just kind of spider rig or long line. Unfortunately, on this side of the river that I'm fishing, I'm gonna fish on the Minnesota side. Uh, you can only have two lines with one jig tied to each line. So you're, you're only allowed two rods, which, you know, if you have a few guys in the boat, it might make sense to long line, but with just two, two rods, I, I don't know, that's tough. Your best bet is probably throw a buoy marker on here and, and just keep casting at it today. Big storm. We got another storm coming through this afternoon. Oh, swing and a miss got him again hit it on the second drop come here buddy little guy it seems like those bigger crop here out past it you guys can see on the bottom there there's some big fish out there but the reason I use uh, curly tails or paddle tail swim baits if you're gonna do a lot more casting is if you do have some sort of cold front come through when they hit it as this thing's dropping there's a lot of tail action both on the curly tails um, the B vibes that I use the little paddle tail swim baits like that's that's the type of bait you want to use to help trigger a bite if you're doing a ton of casting if you're doing more, more vertical jigging or just like pitching out over a brush pile and like swinging it through those minnow profiles that I have been using like the small fry um, or even some sort of insect larva pattern those work really well but to do this type of setup where you're, you're casting quite a, quite a few feet away from the boat you know 30 40 feet away from the boat and then reeling it over the top of them some sort of curly tailor oh dang there he was they're starting to get aggressive now curly tailor paddle tail swim bait to trigger a bite all right, because I know you guys are sick of the live scope, but we're going to throw a buoy on this thing. Pretty much nailed it. I might be a little to the left, which is fine. That way I can cast on the left side of it. And for a 1 16th, this thing's dropping probably about f four seconds for every about seven, seven to eight feet. So since we're in about 10 feet of water, it's probably gonna count down to about five and then I'm gonna slow reel and just kind of bounce it. And that'll get me kind of close to where they're at in the strike zone.
There he is. Come here, buddy. He's a little guy, but he's a chunker. He's only about nine, though. See you, bud. There he is. Oh, that's a that's a good fish. There's a keeper. There's another eater for the live well. Oh, it's one of those little, I don't know if you guys can see that. It's one of those pontoon uh, jet ski boats. I think Sea Dew makes them. Can't remember what they're called. I'm not sure how well you guys saw that, but that is a chunker. Throw this guy on the bump board real quick. What do we got here? Ten and a halfer. Ten and a half. The one thing I love about river crappie. The bait fish are really healthy in, in a river system, and then that means these crappie are gonna feed up real well. And so they're typically a lot bigger than our natural lakes. You gotta remember our, a lot of our natural lakes are only a couple thousand acres in size, so that bait fish population, if it's not a healthy bait fish population, those crappie just aren't gonna get that big. And it's not just crappie, I mean, it could be bass, walleye, whatever else is in the lake. It's gotta have a healthy bait population. River systems, they have great bait populations, like. St. Croix, Mississippi, there's just so many bait fish in here. And that helps grow some really big crappie. All right, well that is gonna wrap it up for today. That is a 13 inch Northern Wisconsin stud of a crappie right there. Um, catch them on these curly tails. See if we can get it in focus for you. Yeah, well, crappie monster curly tail. So that's, that's all I'm doing on the river systems right now. Scanning shallow water, I'm actually set up right now on the same kind of brush pile setup. Um, scanning shallow water, really nice fish, gonna get her back in the live well. But be sure to uh, click the top link in the description, it's for Crappie Monster. Use promo code DAVIS, 20% off. So enjoy the uh, last few weeks of summer here, and uh, get out in the water, catch some crappie. Don't be afraid of shallow water on your river systems, your flowages, any type of creek channels or something that flows in there. The natural lakes are not gonna have, you know, as abundant of crappie in the shallows, but these river systems can be really, really good producers of quality crappie up shallow. So if you got any comments or questions, post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I always appreciate hearing from you. Again, be sure to click that top link in the video description, get yourself some tackle and save some money. We'll see you in the next one.